Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is February 25th and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. Look at this bee spinning up the coastline. It reached maturity off our coast and even though it was degrading, still plenty powerful enough to bring a strong wind blow here across much of the Puget Sound, western Washington. We had the squall line move through last night. Some areas gusting towards 70, 75 miles per hour on the coast. 58 at my house, 60 at Boeing Field. Definitely uh, a pretty major region-wide windstorm here, folks. And when all is said and done, I think most people will agree with that. So let's take a look at what the latest is here, and we'll take a look at what is to come as well. Again, you can see precipitation. There is the combination of Doppler radars. It looks like they might have had the Camino Island Doppler up for a bit there, but it's back down. They're probably working on it right now as we speak. I think it got put out of commission either from wind or a lightning strike last night. And still, look at this, 145 customers out. So uh, those can be individual families as well. So there's hundreds of thousands of people here across western Washington without power. Currently, Oregon was much higher last night. Things are starting to bounce back here today, so that's good to see. See, I saw like over 160,000 customers were out at one point yesterday. So yes, indeed, a very dramatic windstorm and 58 miles per hour at my house. That is the cutoff there for severe wind. And this thing hit the house like a freight train. I think this is what damaged my fence in the backyard as well. Got to go out and check some of the damage out there as I go on my daily walk here, but I might want to be careful because there's a lot of tall trees around where I live. National Weather Service Seattle talking about that 52 mile per hour gust uh, was uh, the strongest since February 2008. And uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, in February. So yeah, pretty dramatic windstorm here. And again, Boeing Field, there's proof there, 60 miles per hour. We take a look at Everett, topping out at 52, been gusting over 40 for hours now. And if we take a look at Hoquiam, I'll go to wind speed and gusts. And we've been dealing with gusts over 60 miles per hour for many hours now, six, eight hours. And you can see it even bounced back here again this morning, topping out at 70 miles per hour. Cape Disappointment, some of Long Beach is without power. That takes a lot to do to put the power out down there. And I saw some gusts towards 85 miles per hour out on the Washington coast. So, yes, a very intense windstorm. We look at Seattle, Tacoma. Check it out. You can see these multiple gusts up over 50 miles per hour. And we've been at 40 plus here for, uh, again, at least six, seven, eight hours for SeaTac. I've missed approaches go right over my house. So I've been paying attention to those as well. There have been numerous missed approaches this uh, last night and this morning. Now, taking a look at the Pacific Northwest, still got a lot going on here, but we are on the wane. We'll be dropping these wind speeds as we go on in through the day today. The light is at the end of the tunnel. And we do get a break here coming up, and we'll check the extended forecast here in a minute. You can see the high wind warning does go on through 10 a.m. for Seattle, Tacoma, Olympia, Centralia, and Toledo. Still got the winter storm warning. We'll be wrapping up today as well. Snow levels down to about 3,000 feet as we speak, so that could be impacting Snoqualmie Pass right now. Keep that in mind if you're traveling back and forth. We still have high surf advisories for some of the Washington and Oregon coast also. Portland, Oregon, you see these greens. That is the high surf warning. And if I click on that, let's see what they're talking about. Breakers to 34 feet. Just incredible wave action out there. Be careful if you're out towards the coastline there. And uh, same thing for Medford, Oregon. They've been calling attention to that as well. So high surf advisories and high surf warnings are still out. <clears throat> so the wind is still continues east of the mountains also. Pendleton, Oregon talking about that. Gusts in some locations, 65 miles per hour. Most areas, 45 to 50. Five. And look at Ritzville, 60. Walla Walla, 60. Still quite blustery out there. So heads up for that as we move through the day today. Although they will be, these wind speeds will be on the wane as we go through the afternoon and the evening hours today. So here we are looking at the Northeast Pacific Ocean. There's the Hawaiian Islands bottom left. There's Washington State. This is the storm system. Very well tracked as it moved across Pacific Northwest to bring us our fairly major wind storm here. But then the ridging starts to set in. And I'm all for a little bit of a break here. Um, to try to assess things and hopefully allow things to dry out. But yeah, you can see some systems going through Southern California and another one into California there. Might spread some precipitation northward, but we're not looking at any windstorm here as we go on in through the next week or so. But we'll keep a watch on things. So it looks like we may get active again as we go through the month of March. 
Now, one more look at things here. And again, this is probably a 972 millibar low at its peak. But so you'll look at it there and you might get fooled and say, hey, this low is weakening. It's not going to bring big winds to the Puget Sound. But you got to remember, it's the pressure gradient that matters. The, the low pressure center and what the, you know, the, the actual pressure value means very little because we, you know, we kind of cast a lee low here. And that's a very strong pressure gradient here across western Washington. So if you're not paying close attention, then you might get fooled by a system like this. And that's why it brought these strong winds. National Weather Service did a great job with that high wind warning and it did verify quite nicely. So kudos to the National Weather Service Seattle. I'd like to brag a little bit in here and just talk about that I've been talking about this windstorm here for days now as well. And if we take a look at the North American model 10 meter wind gust, you can kind of see as we go through the late morning hours. I mean, even at two o'clock, it still shows some gusts for Seattle towards 40 miles per hour. But again, that will be on the wane. Still some gusty winds, east cascades across the higher train. Eastern Washington still up over 40 miles per hour as we go through the day today. Some areas still up over 50 as we go through tonight. And then finally coming to an end as we go on in through Wednesday and Thursday coming up here. And same thing here on the European, just a wider view of things there. There's that storm system moving through and the eventual decline of these wind speeds as we go on in through the day tomorrow. Finally going to get a break here. Now, if we take a look at Boeing Field, the NAM 3 camel high resolution model, if you look down there, it goes hour by hour and predicts the wind speeds. It said 55 and a lot of people are like, wow, is that really going to happen at Boeing Field? It turns out it was underestimating that as we did it 60 miles per hour. So yeah, and then you can see how it's been pretty blustery here uh, as we go through the morning hours. And then you can see the gradual decline as we go through tonight. And same thing for Hoquiam there, it predicted 59, actually hit 70 miles per hour and even stronger on other portions of the coast. And again, a lot of power outages out there right now as well. Uh, I actually had a report from my one of my wife's co-workers tree down on I-5 near South Center and, and whatnot. And I saw on social media some other cars that were hit by trees. So it'll be interesting to check out some of the damage situation that's been going on as well. So taking a look at the GFS 12Z run. Let me update that and we'll put this into motion. And again, the storm clears out here. We start to build some ridging, degrading systems, approach BC, a little bit of light precipitation with that. But as you can see, we're not dealing with any strong storms. We do have some systems impacting Oregon. The here though as we go through next week and we'll watch out for that one could bring some mountain snow and spread some of that precipitation northward but not a strong system there but that could be a decent snowmaker we'll see how that goes and then you see we get another break maybe on through the extended forecast deep low out over the gulf of alaska and then maybe some additional frontal systems as we go through the early portion of march maybe picking things back up again look we'll at some of that cooler air trying to move down across portions of western canada with some systems coming into the pacific northwest so we're bound to get active again as we go through the month of March. You can still get lower elevation snowfall and windstorms in the month of March for much of the region. And if we take a look at the last European extended run, this goes way off here. This goes like 46 days out into the future. That's the system we're dealing with now. But then you can see the ridge build as we go through Tuesday night, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then some systems coming into California as we go through the weekend here. But, but a nice little break coming up before we start to get that Gulf of Alaska troughing going here and some interesting systems as we roll through the month of March and you're going to see that Gulf Alaska tropping swinging some powerful frontal systems our way as we head on in through the month of March so maybe we got a stormy March coming in uh, what is this saying March comes in like a lion out like a lamb I don't know we'll see how that goes though now six to ten day temperature outlook kind of a mixed bag here across Pacific Northwest we go through March two through six updated that that is the most recent there's the six to ten day kind of a mixed bag as well and yeah, channel's doing good. We picked up a, a fair number of subscribers here over the last few days. You can see a few hundred. And if we go back 28 days, you can see we picked up almost, you know, over 3,000 subscribers in the last 28 days. Kind of cool on YouTube that you can go back and check out the last year and see where we are 365 days ago, 35,000 plus. And if we go back to a lifetime, you can see the entire the length of this. If you go back to 2023, December, you know, 18,000. So yeah, again, much thanks to all my supporting members and all of my subscribers who come to check back here daily. Humbly, you guys are the reason why this channel exists. Hopefully the channel continues to grow here. There's a good Pacific Northwest community. A lot of storm chasers actually live out here. And there's other up and coming people that are starting to do YouTube channels as well. I'm going to co collaborate with them also. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day. Otherwise, hopefully your damage is not too bad. I'm going to go check things out. Check out me on Blue Sky, Seattle Weather Guy and X if you want updates during the day today. And I'm going to end this video here before the power goes out again. I can still hear the wind gusting outside. So I will talk to you guys later.